This is an in-depth video on my new steel front triangle. We go over all the details of this frame. Um, if that sounds boring to you, maybe the in-depth video isn't for you. So these frames are designed by Kodak in the UK. I first met Cy from Kodak at the Fort William World Cup. He was introduced to me from Chris from the Downtime Podcast. They've been friends for a while and he was interested in what I was doing with Frameworks. So I got to chat with him there. And then as we got through the season, we were having a bunch of cracks with our aluminum frames and we were talking about the strength qualities of steel. Um, so I had some ideas about how maybe he could improve it with a steel frame. I was more interested in the ride quality. Um, that's kind of why I started this whole project. And you hear a lot about how steel has a, a damp ride quality. And I wanted to see what that was all about. So in Leger, at the end of the season, Cy was there with a booth for Kodak again. He offered to do the 3D design. Obviously, we try to keep the two frames as similar as possible, but there would be some differences in steel construction. Steel is a lot harder of a metal, so you can't do some of the things you can do with aluminum using steel. And also being that this is a prototype, we weren't gonna go too far out of our way to invest in some tooling to make specific parts for this frame. Tried to make it as simple as we could good proof of concept, and then go from there. So this frame uses a mixture of Reynolds tubing. Reynolds 853 is their air hardening, high strength steel alloy. Um, the top tube, down tube, and seat tube are all Reynolds 853. And then the head tube, bottom bracket, and all the laser cut plates, the gussets, are just a mild steel. The frame was built by Five Land in Scotland. They're in Edinburgh. And those guys make a lot of handmade bikes in steel and titanium. They have a lot of experience making stuff out of this material and they make all of Kodak's bikes. So they were the go-to and they were awesome to work with. They were super stoked on the project and they did an awesome job with these frames. The down tube and seat tube are 38.1 mil or inch and a half by one mil wall thickness. And the top tube is also a 38.1 budded one mil to 0.7 in the middle. And the head tube is a 60 OD. It's an inch and a half adjustable to keep the same as my aluminum bike. And it's a two mil wall thickness. Now, looking back, I think we could save some weight off this frame in the next one. The head tube in particular doesn't need to be um, an oversized head tube. It's nice to have that 10 mil of adjustment with the headset cups that we made. But in steel, that's a super heavy piece. Like holding it off the bike, the thing weighs a ton. So. In the future, if we wanted to make more steel frames, I think we could do a little bit better on the weight. Or these are about a thousand grams, roughly heavier than my aluminum frames. I'm not sure if that's a bad thing. It's all suspended mass, so it's in the right places. Some people like a heavier frame. I've seen dudes add weights to frames before. Theoretically, weight in the suspended mass keeps the bike planted. It's not moving and unsuspended mass, everything that's moving with your suspension um, is just more inertia to go back and forth when your suspension moves. That's why I went for the carbon rear end. So if you're gonna put weight anywhere on the suspended mass would be the better part of the bike to put it, in theory. As I said, the construction's a little bit different um, with some of these 2D sort of laser cut pieces. The, the gusset to the head tube is pretty big, going from a smaller tube to a larger diameter head tube. There wasn't as much wrap around from the top tube and down tube. So we reinforced that with a lot bigger side plate gusset. The shock mount and the gusset that joins the seat tube to the top tube are both also laser cut, just plate. And one thing that's pretty cool that we did with this frame was we used a removable shock mount. So this thing can be rotated front or back, like some bikes have a progression adjust. I think the Trek has something like that. Um, but this gives us just another point of freedom with the frame, we can use a different link and a different shock mount if we wanna change the leverage ratio. Um, on this design before, with the hard mounted to the frame, we were limited to just the link if we wanted to change something. And it's a lot easier to get a CNC part made that you can just bolt onto the bike than it is to get a whole new frame welded. It's a lot quicker too. So if we wanna change stuff for tuning along the way, that just gives us another tool that we can adjust both shock mounts to the bike. With adjusting both the bottom and the top shock mount, you can get a lot of change in your leverage ratio. You can move the shock up and down as well as forward and backwards, and you can get the bike to be 
more or less progressive as well as higher or lower average leverage ratio. So there's a ton of room. I wouldn't really use that much of a change myself. I feel like I'm pretty close and you don't wanna change so much with the bike. In fact, I'm just using it for testing. I think, I believe that in racing, when you get the bike there, you probably don't need to change the mechanics of the bike so much. You can do all that with your suspension, with hydraulics. But now, while I'm still figuring out where the, where the magic number is, or if there is one, it's nice to have the adjustment that I can quickly change in my testing. Something else that was interesting with this bike was that we used a press-in cup to hold the main pivot bearing. Kodak does this on their enduro bikes, and in steel, it just allows an easier construction. Um, this is the same as a inch and an eighth head tube, the tube that holds these cups in. So it's almost like a miniature headset with two cups and bearings that press into the frame. And that just makes it easier to get that precise bearing bore in steel. Um, they can just ream that like they're reaming a head tube, an inch and an eighth head tube, and then press in these cups that then hold the main pivot bearings. So something different in construction and just one of those things that's unique to the material. One thing unique to steel construction is that you need to protect the bike from rust. As uh, Neil Young says, rust never sleeps. So we had to dip these things in some sort of a bath that puts corrosion resistant along the insides of the tubes and then paint the outside. This one was Cerakoted. Um, a lot of people told me the white looks sick. I just chose white because it would be the easiest to see cracks. I haven't been able to ride it myself yet. Um, I'm hoping to get back on the bike slowly, very soon. I think actually tomorrow I'm gonna get cleared to ride again. So I won't be hopping on the downhill bike the first day, but I'll be building back up to it and hopefully in the next couple weeks get to ride this thing. But everyone that's ridden it says they love it. They say it has just a quieter feel on the trail. Um, quieter in the sense of damping all the frequencies that come through the bike. Qu quieter not in the sense of actual noise, but trail chatter. Um, it just gives a more damp ride. Most people who have ridden this thing extensively are a little bit slower than me, so I'm not sure if once I push it harder, it gets to a point where it feels too soft or vague. Um, I've ridden other steel bikes that have felt like that, but the goal with this was to have the same flex as the aluminum bike, and maybe dynamically when the bike is moving back and forth, um, even with the same linear flex, it reacts differently on the trail. And there's a lot of black magic in that, it's hard to quantify, but I just need to throw a leg over it and see how it feels for myself. One thing I'd like to do that we didn't when we tested with Austin, and uh, also my buddy Matt Driscoll tested it extensively, he actually raced it at the Mountain Creek National, was add the weight back to the aluminum bike that this one is heavier to make both bikes the same weight regardless of material to see if maybe the weight difference had an effect on how the bike felt. Um, we focused a lot on the steel, but we never tried to isolate only the weight. That was definitely a variable that came with the other material. So I look forward to trying that in the future. This one's super dirty. Uh, my brother Logan's been riding the heck out of it at Windrock and at all the downhill southeast races in practice. So it's all dirty and dusty like most of the bikes that we film these videos of. We didn't build them to look pretty. We built them to ride hard. Excited to get back and be able to ride this thing myself. Thanks to Kogo for supporting these videos. Thanks to Worldwide Cyclery for supporting my program since day one. Um, if you're interested in any new bike parts, click through the link in the show notes of this video and you can check out all the parts that I run. And I also wrote a brief explanation as to why I chose them. Um, that's about it. Hopefully I have more testing updates for you guys soon.